it's time for a coding with Kate. And today, my favorite episode ever, my favorite thing to do in coding is ICD-10 PCS or Procedural Coding System. Now remember, PCS coding is only used in inpatient hospital settings. You will not use this anywhere else, only inpatient hospital settings. This book is color coded. It is organized. It uses tables to help build your code. Yes, you build your code. You don't look for lists of codes and find which one closely resembles or describes the procedure you're coding for. You build your code because each character signifies an aspect of the procedure and you choose which number or letter you need and you build your code. It's very exciting. Looking at what the code looks like, it is seven characters long. And your first character is the section, meaning is it medical and surgical? Is it imaging? Is it extracorporeal therapies, etc. The second character is your body system. Third character is your root operation or the objective of the procedure. Fourth character is your body part, which body part is actually being worked on. Your fifth character is your approach. How did the healthcare provider, physician, surgeon get to that body part? The sixth character is your device character, usually a pacemaker, a prosthetic, a stent, catheter, etc. And then your seventh character is your qualifier. This character offers more information to describe the procedure or what the device was used for, etc. So this is your code. You need to fill in every single character and you need to find the correct letter or number to describe the procedure. It is very important. And this code tries to capture as much information as possible about the procedure being performed. I have an example. It's somewhat long, but we are gonna read through an op report and this is an op report that was in one of my practice exercises in the book for the PCS course. And what I like to do when I'm reading through these practice exercises is as I go along, I highlight the information that I need to build my code. Since we already know what characters are what, we know what to look for, or hopefully we'll learn what to look for in the op report so we know which information needs to be captured and assigned to a character placement. So the procedure is a placement of a dual chamber pacemaker. And the procedure description literally gives you step-by-step step what the surgeon did from the moment the patient came in to the moment they go to the recovery room. It describes everything. So know that there is some information in there that we don't need. And it's also important to figure out what is an integral part of the procedure so you know what not to code. And if you are not sure if it is or is not integral, you can go online to your forums or talk to your professor to find out if this is or not. They also emphasize looking for videos or animations of the surgical procedure so you can visually see what this looks like. And from there, you will also figure out if it's integral or not. So. The procedure says, after informed consent, the patient is brought to the lab. The procedure was done under conscious sedation. Fluoroscopic guidance, remember that. 1% lidocaine was used to anesthetize the skin under the left clavicle, and a subcutaneous pocket was made for a pacemaker, generator, and leads. We need to remember that information. The placement, the location, and what is being put there. The left subclavian vein we need to remember that, that's our approach, was cannulated twice using a micropuncture set, which was upsized to regular 035 wire, the precision of which confirmed under fluoro. A seven French sheath and a seven French right ventricular lead was used, that's a clue of where we're going, and placed in the right ventricular apex. That is where it went, right ventricle apex. That is the body part we are looking for. Originally, and then more approximately in the inferior wall, the numbers were suboptimal, including the R wave sensing. I then moved the lead to the right ventricle, mid to upper septum. Yes, they moved the lead, but they stayed within the right ventricle. The numbers were better, there was no diaphragmatic stimulation, and the lead was sutured down. This was an active fixation lead. 
the right atrial lead, that's a clue to another location, a separate portion of the body part of the heart, right atrium, was then placed using a seven French sheath under fluoroscopic guidance. Still, we need to remember fluoroscopic guidance. The numbers looked good, there was no diaphragmatic stimulation, and the lead was sutured down. The leads were then attached to the generator, that is the other portion of this procedure, the generator, which was sutured down in the pocket. Remember, the pocket is from the beginning of the procedure, a subcutaneous pocket by the left clavicle. That is the device that is going in the subcutaneous pocket. Wound irrigated with antibiotic and expected inspected for hemostasis and close in layers. Patient tolerated the procedure well without any complication. So that is our op report. Quick summary of information I made a note of. So there is insertion. That is our root operation. When a device is being placed, that is the objective of the procedure, placing a device. The device does not take over the functioning of a body part. It just assists and helps in the performance of the body part. So it is insertion. There is insertion in the right ventricle for the lead. There is a second code for insertion into the right atrium for the lead. So we have two codes that are going to take place in the heart, right ventricle, right atrium. Then we have a third code for the insertion of the generator. This will take place in the subcutaneous pocket, a completely different body part than the heart. So we're going to be going to a different section of the book. And we also need to make note that the device being put in there is the dual chamber pacemaker generator. That is the information that we will look for in our device section. And possibly they may have more information in our qualifier character placement. I'm not sure. We will find out when we go into the table. And then finally, our fourth code is the imaging component, the fluoroscopic guidance. That is not something that is captured in one of the other codes I just described. So we need to go into the imaging section to capture that portion of the procedure. And the fluoroscopic guidance happened on the heart, on the right side of the heart, because they only noted that fluoroscopic guidance was for helping them get from the left subclavian vein to the right ventricle and the right atrium. So now, you can either go into the index, which is in the front of the book, and look for insertion or the body part. Since I am familiar with the organization of this book, I usually go right to the tables. But for learning purposes, we'll at least do the first code starting from the index. So we will look under insertion. And when you get to the insertion part, it says insertion of device in. So insertion is very specific to the placement of a device and it, that just further confirms that. So with insertion, you will go down to either the heart or more specifically the ventricle or atrium. Either way is going to take you to the same section, the same table. It's just the body part within the body system that differs. So we can look for the more specific. We'll start with the ventricle. And it gives you, as a subterm, the left or the right. Either way, it takes you to the same table. We will go with the right. That is where the procedure took place. So it says O2HK. So right away, we can already input those numbers and letters in our diagram. O2HK. Then we go to the table to fill in the rest of our code. So o 2 is in the heart and great vessels. It is a dark blue section. I'm a visual learner, so I remember the order of the colors. And then we go to insertion. That will be midway through because the root operations are roughly in alphabetical order. It's this table. So it says section O, medical and surgical, body system, heart and great vessels, operation, insertion, O to H. Then we go to our fourth character to confirm that K is the correct one we need. So when you look down the body part column, you look for K. We find it in the first row. It says ventricle right. That is what we need. Now with PCS, once you find which row you are working in, you are to remain in that row to fill out the rest of your characters. You cannot move to different rows. You have to stay within that same row. And those are the only options you are given to fill in the rest of your code. 
So then we have to go to our fifth character, our approach, how they got to the heart. So we can choose from open, percutaneous, or percutaneous endoscopic. Open means they literally did a large incision, opened you up so they could visually see with their eyes the heart. No visual equipment needed for that. Percutaneous, meaning they did a small incision. We know it is percutaneous. Endoscopic is if there is a scope of some sort or visual tool used that is inserted into the body to help find the correct location. But fluoroscopic guidance is a separate code, so endoscopic is not what we need. So percutaneous, which is a number three. Number three, our device. We have several options. There are monitoring devices, infusion devices, cardiac lead devices. Those are the ones we need to look at. They have cardiac lead pacemaker, cardiac lead defibrillator, or just in general cardiac lead. We need to go to the highest degree of specificity and detail. So cardiac lead pacemaker. Lead came up in our op report and pacemaker came up in our op report. So we need to choose cardiac lead pacemaker, which is a J. And finally, our qualifier, if there's any other information that is offered, we would find that in that column, but it says Z, no qualifier. So we put a Z. And this is our code, O2HK3JZ. Now, that is for our right ventricle. A lead is also going into the right atrium. So we can look down our body part, look for right atrium. It's in the same row, which means the rest of the information will be the same. So all we have to do is change our body part character. So O2H stays the same. We're in the same table, same section. It is just our fourth character. We are in a different body part of the heart, which is the right atrium. Six, and everything else stays the same because it is still a cardiac lead. The approach is still the same. Everything is still the same except the body part. We went from right ventricle to right atrium. So these are our two codes for the leads portion of the procedure. Then we move on to the subcutaneous pocket. You can either go back into the index, but since I know the organization of the book, I know which section to go in. It will be subcutaneous tissue and fascia because in the op report they said subcutaneous pocket. So subcutaneous tissue and fascia, it's a dark green section. It's about almost midway through the medical and surgical section. So we need to find insertion because the pacemaker generator is a device and devices are inserted. That is the terminology PCS uses. And we have a big, big table. So this is our big table on this side. It's pretty big. Which section we are in? It is O, J, H. O, medical surgical, J, subcutaneous tissue and fascia, H, insertion. OJH. Subcutaneous tissue and fascia, the body parts are body regions, essentially. We need to look for the chest. Does it happen in the left, the left clavicle, which is in the chest region? And if you aren't sure if it's trunk, you can always look in the device column and see if trunk has the devices you need. It does not. It is the chest. The chest gives us information about a pacemaker, generator, etc. So we look down the body part until we find subcutaneous tissue and fascia chest. And that is a number six. Number six. We go to the approach. I'm going to assume it is open. I say open because they made a large incision so they could open up and make room to get the pacemaker generator in. They could visually see that inside when they were putting the generator in. I'm going to say open. If you coders out there say, nope, it should be percutaneous, please let me know and why so I understand the reasoning. Then we go to our device. So we know that it is a dual chamber pacemaker generator. So we look down our long, long list of different devices that are commonly put in the subcutaneous tissue and fascia. And we look for pacemaker, because we know dual chamber pacemaker. It gives single chamber. It also gives dual chamber. That's what we need. The op report said dual chamber pacemaker. That is number six. And then our qualifier, any other information, it says Z, no qualifier. So we don't need to put anything except a Z. So our code is OJH606Z. And then our final, final, final code is the fluoroscopic guidance. Now I will let you know that this example 
was in a section of the workbook that tells you to not code for fluoroscopic, so we don't have all the information, but I will let you know what to do if that happens. So we go to imaging. Again, you can go to the index, look for fluoroscopic. It will take you to the imaging section. The imaging section is also dark green. It is near the back of the book. The section starts with a B. So the first character that we need is a B. We are no longer in medical surgical section. We are now in imaging section. From there, we need to look for our body system, which is the heart, since the fluoroscopic guidance was for placing the leads in the heart. That would give us a number two. And then we need to find the type. So what type of imaging guidance? Fluoroscopic is what we need to look for. Fluoroscopy, which is a one. Now, the rest of these characters, they have different names, so we aren't into approach device. Each character has a different description or title name because there are different types of information to describe this procedure. So our fourth is our body part. Thankfully that one stayed the same. We know that it is on the right side of the heart, the ventricle and the atrium. Those are the two sections of the heart that the leads went to and the guidance was for putting them there. So we look down into our body part. When we look for heart, we want to look for the right side. So it says right at the beginning, heart right. That is what we need. And that is a number four. And then this is where we get into we need information that we don't have. So contrast, we did not give that information or get that information. So at this point, you would have to query the provider for that information if in the actual op report they forgot to tell you. So you can have high osmolar, low osmolar, or other contrasts. In the beginning of this chapter, they give a detailed explanation of what types of contrast are high osmolar, low osmolar, etc. So let's say you courted the provider, they said, oh, we use Omnipake 250. You would be able to find that that is low osmolar, which is a one. And then the last two characters are qualifier characters. And looking at this, it says Z none for both. So we get to put a Z in the last two character places. So our final code is B2141ZZ. This describes the fluoroscopic guidance used in this procedure. So now we have all four codes and it will be put in this sequence. Any coders out there, if you know the correct sequence, if the pacemaker generator should be coded first and then the leads, I'm just putting leads because that component came first. You let me know. But the fluoroscopic guidance always normally goes last since that was not the objective of the procedure. That was just a visual component to assist in the insertion of the devices. So fluoroscopic would go last in that sequencing. And that is PCS coding. It is so much fun. I love it. I love learning about it. If you are a visual learner, navigating this book will be very, very simple. It will make a lot of sense. Don't be intimidated by the op reports. It really is not that hard to read and translate. The more you do it, the easier it will be. So I suggest using my tip of highlighting the pertinent information that you need to build your code since you know you need to find the objective, the body part, body system, the approach, how they got to that body part. You already know which information is needed. All you have to do is find it in that op report, highlight it, and then review it when you're done while you build your code. So thank you for watching. If you have questions, let me know. If you have any other tips and tricks talking to you coders, let me know and I will see you later.